in the AA. Uh, things don't normally finish on time and start on time. Um, but so we're a couple of minutes early, but I guess most people are here who want to be here. Um, as you'll see in most AA events, people wander in and out during, during the day. And this is a bit of a marathon for you because you're going through all of these course introductions in one great sort of lump, which is difficult. You'll be happy to hear we're almost, well, we're, we're more than halfway through now, so uh, <coughs> the end is in sight. Uh, and at the end, uh, 5.30, there'll be drinks and, and refreshments uh, over in the uh, large room on the other side of the terrace that you've already been using. I've already met some of you before uh, on the bus trip or on the boat trip last week. My name is Hugo Hinsley, and I'm one of the directors of the Housing and Urbanism Programme in the Graduate School, which has been running for many years now. Um, developing both theoretical and critical writing and uh, design work and being particularly interested in linking across between the development of design techniques and design strategies, the thinking through drawing and the capacity to write and argue uh, together with drawing. So it's a, a, a mixture about half and half. I'll go into that in more detail. We have a big team of tutors uh, working through the year. Uh, we offer two different degrees at the end, an MA and an MArch. Uh, they're both exactly the same length of time and the same quality of degree, but the MA can complete uh, this time of year in September, after 12 months, the MArch continues through until the next January because during the summer, there isn't studio space available in the AA to run through, whereas the MAs can continue to work through the summer. So it's a slightly different uh, pattern. Uh, and you'll be meeting all of these tutors over the next few days uh, and get to be able to put names to faces. The program is trying to get a conversation going between how you develop better design skills at the scale of the urban, how you connect spatial design with the process of urban change and urban development. For that reason, we need to study a bit about policy, about economics, about how decisions are made in cities, but always with the question about how does that produce the built space of the city. And the program, of course, is housing and urbanism. It started many years ago as a housing program when housing was one of the really hot topics around the world. It still is today, but politicians increasingly are running away from it as something they can't solve and they don't want to talk about. But we continue to work uh, with that. So, but we see housing not as a separate subject, but absolutely integral into the whole question of both the spatial performance of the city, but also the political and social and economic life of the city. We work intentionally in multi-scalar ways. We're not interested in just doing the design of a building or a sequence of buildings in a cluster nor are we interested in doing just large-scale master plans or regional plans. In every piece of work we do, we want to be able to try and make the argument about that work up and down the scales. So you might zoom into doing a particularly detailed exploration of a particular design problem, but be able to argue that out to a regional level in terms of a strategy. It's something which architects instinctively know about, but they're not very good at doing. Uh, and particularly in office work, you tend to get more and more locked into very specific tasks that you've been set to do within a bigger problem. And it, one of the pleasures of being back in being a student uh, and being involved in research is you can relax and expand that into a much bigger conversation about how a particular problem fits within a larger structure of problems. We've worked always on an international and comparative basis. We're not interested in saying what is the problem in Britain or in Germany or in China 
or in Brazil. We're interested in being able to, in a way, get the skills that wherever we might be working in 10 years time, we'll know how to take the knowledge we've had from looking at other places, not to just dump it in a new place, the sort of thing that often happens through United Nations and World Bank and other proposals. Oh, great, We've got to do some housing here. We saw some good housing somewhere else. Let's do it here. But instead of that, to be able to ask the right questions of any context that we're working in, to build the argument of how one should intervene, and then think back through a whole comparative base of international work that uh, we've worked on to be able to address that problem in an interesting way. What we're trying to do is to develop with you a critically informed practice of urbanism. Urbanism isn't architecture. Urbanism isn't urban design. It's not planning. It's a broader discipline that involves both critical and theoretical discussion and the capacity to design, and to design at many scales. We'll develop that discussion a lot more in the next few weeks. The components of the program are six lecture courses, three design workshops, a European study visit, which we do this term, an urban seminar, which develops a whole range of debates from other people talking about that practice of urbanism, and then seminars that support the development of the final thesis. It's probably easier to understand that in the sense of a diagram rather than a list. On the left, in green, you can see the sequence of lecture series and seminar series, which run throughout the first two terms. Uh, and as students, you'll be involved in all of those, but you will select from two of them each term, ones in which you're going to do your own research and produce a paper. And that's done as individual work, but it's done as individual work through discussions in a seminar. In red on the right, you can see the other 50% of your work, which is design studio work. And that's a sequence of things from the first uh, inner London studies, which will be starting on uh, immediately uh, this week, through the comparative European study trip, which is not uh, getting involved in design, but doing comparative studies to bring back into a debate about what we've already discovered from the research here. And then the major London design workshop, which runs right through the second term, which is a chance for you now not working individually, but working in groups. Uh, as Brett said right at the beginning, one of the key things that's really important about postgraduate work is that you are working as you do in the real world with other colleagues and with other disciplines and trying to develop uh, a much richer strategy. Uh, and then uh, towards the uh, end of the second term, in the, in the break between the second term and the third term, an international intensive design workshop, which is a particular model we've developed over the years. I'll show you some examples of it uh, in a few minutes, where we work in collaboration with a city somewhere outside of Europe normally, which is going through a process of rapid change in urbanization. And we work as consultants to them to develop new strategies in relation to real policy and to produce documents which then become part of a debate. For example, for the past two years, we've been working in Brazil, in a city in the northeast of Brazil called Recife, which is a medium-sized city, very different from Rio or Sao Paulo, which has all of the problems that you find across Latin America and many other parts of the world with massive rapid urbanization, huge <coughs> problems of informal and illegal occupation, uh, but tremendous productivity combined with chaos. Uh, and those are the sort of conditions that we are used to working in. And you can see at the bottom of the diagram, we switch from that pattern of the courses and the design studios to a point uh, halfway through the year where you begin to focus on what will be your final uh, thesis work either a, a, master's design th uh, a master's written thesis, a research thesis, or an MArch design thesis. 
there are many things that we're considering, but there are three sorts of underlying themes uh, which we've been working on for several years now. One is what's often called the knowledge economy, the impact of the switch from the older production economy, the making of things, to the knowledge economy. You're all very familiar with that. Uh, and the implications that has for built space. It challenges everything. It challenges what the workspace is. It challenges what living space is. It's increasing people are living and working in the same spaces. There's no need to go to work, as it were, as there was in the previous economies, and so on. So that's one of the things we're particularly interested in. Another is how we develop the skills to work with irregularity and informality, rather than pretending it doesn't exist, rather than trying to clean it up and say, oh dear, oh dear, we have large slums in Asifi in Latin America, the thing we should do is bu bulldoze them all down and replace them with nice shiny buildings because that will solve the problem. Rather than that, to work with them and to develop strategies of development that make sense to the economy and the social structure of the city, rather than imposing things from the outside. And the third theme that we've been developing over many years is this question of density, which we're really reinterpreting a question of intensity. There's a lot of debate in cities around the world about how do you actually understand density, how do you have strategies about so-called compact city or transport-oriented development and so on. Uh, what are the values and implications of those, not just as mathematical density, but in terms of urban intensity, the quality of life, the richness and complexity that you get. You know it when you see it. You know which parts of cities have really got that sort of buzz, but how do you design it? It's very difficult to uh, find ways to do that. So I'll now briefly talk you through a little bit about some of the lecture courses, but very briefly, and then show you some examples from the uh, design work. Uh, later on this week, we'll go through much more detail, uh, and uh, you'll be involved also in meeting students from last year. The MArch team, who are still working this year, will be presenting work and so on, so you start to get involved in the conversation. The outreach of our program, as well as obviously the teaching work, is through international conferences, design workshops, consultancies with many cities around the world. Um, you can see there the sorts of countries we've been working in recently in terms of the intensive design workshops in Brazil, Taiwan, Vietnam, China, Mexico. Um, and. Uh, two years ago, we had one of the research clusters. Uh, every year, Brett and others in the school decide on uh, a range of proposals coming from people in the school to develop particular research interests with the idea of that crossing right across the school. So it's not set within one particular program, and you uh, organize uh, seminars and debates and lectures and other events which intentionally cross over. And we've been running one on urbanism and the informal city, which continues now after its original funding to produce more collaboration and, and conferences. We're involved a lot in international debates. This is one in uh, Taipei, um, one in London, where various graduate programs in the AO were asked to contribute to uh, a discussion about what is sustainable urbanism in a large echo build exhibition. We put on exhibitions in different parts of the world where we have done work in order to take the work outside of the university and to make sure that it becomes part of a public debate. This is a big public exhibition in Mexico following some of the work we were doing there. And of course, endless exhibitions in the AA. The AA is uh, the, the end of year. The, the amazing Projects Review Exhibition and other events that happen uh, throughout the year. These are examples of some of the sorts of exhibitions that we've put on in the past few years. This is last summer's Projects Review, where we were very lucky to be up in the beautiful members' room next to the bar 
And so we tried not to clutter up the room, but to keep it very simple. And also tried in an exhibition to show that the sort of production of our work isn't just glossy drawings, but is notebooks and sketches and models and arguments and so on. So we make film and we do other things all about the investigation of urbanism and housing. Briefly, a few words about those uh, six lecture courses, which you'll be starting to follow as from next week. These two uh, go to follow on from each other, uh, and they're very much uh, addressing this question that we find in Recife and in other parts of the what used to be called the developing world, that's no longer relevant, it is developed, where the social and the economic uh, changes are very fast and powerful and they have had and do have extraordinary impact on the spatial structure of cities. So you can see here in, in Shanghai the sort of wave of new stuff <laughs> as it comes and sort of begins to consume the fabric of the older stuff. This is right in the heart of, uh, of Shanghai. And we're interested in that debate about the relationship between the process of change uh, in the economic and social development, uh, Pudong, uh, and, and the change that goes on in terms of the spatial. Here in Caracas, completely informal, unstructured, illegal development in Mexico, the use of public space for uh, a whole process of social debate, the informal appropriation of spaces. This is in Hanoi. The sort of chaos of uh, unproductive, where in the last boom-bust cycle that hit Europe very badly, in Spain, for example, three and a half million empty dwellings which have never been lived in, the result of a completely artificial economic process which then produced these huge quantities of housing which is useless, it's in the wrong place and is causing massive economic and social crises. Another lecture series we call Shaping the Modern City and it's really looking at European and American urban development uh, in the past 50, 60 years. The challenges that have faced the older urbanized areas of the world and how they are adjusting to that as a comparison to what's happening in the more recently urbanized parts of the world. So that deals obviously with the impact of the shift in economies from the old docks to new forms of trade and transport from the old systems relying on heavy engineering such as the great rail systems of Europe. This is Amsterdam where the heart of the city on the water is dominated by these rail tracks which are now a huge challenge in terms of redesigning. We look back a bit at the history of how ideas about the urban have developed, often unbuilt, sometimes very extreme and how some are, do get built. The extraordinary example for example, in Barcelona of Serdar's plan, which was not just a plan, but was actually built. And is one of the most extraordinary attempts at rethinking the fabric and pattern of the city. More recent attempts to rethink, this is in, in Hamburg, uh, typical of many of the regeneration projects that you now find all over Europe as European cities are trying to rethink their spatial organization, the mix and complexity and range, and also the strategies of how they actually invite and involve investors to come to the city. Not just saying, please come, you can do whatever you like, but in this case, particularly being very intelligent about saying, please come, but you're going to be part of something we've already developed as a spatial strategy and an economic strategy, and if you want to come, you're going to join us in that, but you're going to contribute your part of it. So it's an interesting, informed debate that's going on between the more intelligent urban situations in Europe and 
the waves of investment that are coming in. We're also interested in what happens when things go badly wrong. This is New Orleans. Uh, the impact and the implications this has for the thinking of the future strategy and structure of urban and the beginnings of experimentation. This is uh, Ram Koolhaas doing a project for uh, UAR on the potential for a zero energy city in the desert. Something similar is now being built in uh, Doha. In parallel with those sorts of lectures, we run two series of lectures and seminars. In most of these cases, the lectures also involve you becoming engaged in present, developing your own research and developing discussions with other students and with tutors around the subject. One, the reason of urbanism is really about the development of the discipline of urbanism, which really emerges at the end of the 19th century, looking at the writing and the theories uh, that come out of that. We're very interested all the time that you should be reading, and not just reading architectural magazines and picture books, but that you're actually reading serious intellectual debates about the urban. So this course on the reason of urbanism traces various lines of reasoning that have emerged in the past hundred years as the urban becomes something that intellectuals and theoreticians are dealing with just as much as architects uh, and others. And of course, the crossover when architects, this is Ram Koolhaas, start to push the limits of what you really mean by design and by drawing into much more conceptual work where the architect is also a philosopher, also a, a, a critical thinker, not just the producer of built space. In this case, uh, work done in the Netherlands, imagining the Netherlands, which is an extraordinary European country, really as one urban piece. It is highly connected. The different parts depend on each other. So in this piece of research, the concept was the Netherlands as a city. But also looking uh, at particular buildings, the course that's called Critical Urbanism develops the tools of critical analysis by looking at particular built projects, <coughs> analyzing them, looking at what is written about them, but also what is built. This is the Seattle Public Library. Some of you may know it challenging what a library is and challenging how a piece of the city can perform in very different ways, both spatially but also socially. This is Paris where the decision, the political decision 30 years ago to shift the new office center out to La Défense has had a huge impact on the way that the city has developed, producing in some ways quite unexpected byproducts, a uh, very different and comparative model to what London has done. And the final lecture series in the second term is called Domesticity. And it's really trying to understand the trends and ideas and thinking about what is lived space? What is the house? We're in a house now, but it's no longer acting as a house. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what, over the past 40, 50 years, has been the discussion about domestic, about domestic space? And that goes back, of course, to discussions about the family, about the social structure of living in society, as well as the architectural wave. So here you have some of the very first modernist projects in London from the 1930s. Uh, which created a huge shock wave here as people said, well, that's not proper housing. Nobody can live in that. Looks like a refrigerator. Uh, and then how this becomes in Europe, a much richer debate. This is the Sidlon Harlan, Atelier Five's early work in the 1950s, developing a very different idea of 
how you layer space and organize space, and then how the relationship between the inside and the outside, so the domestic becomes challenged in terms of a house as a box that you live in. The implications of having to deal with crisis and informality. So here in the center of London, the building of temporary structures as part of the clearing up after the bombing of the Second World War, which are still there today. They were supposed to be there for 10 years, but they're now an in intrinsic part of the domestic condition of London. Or, of course, the fascination that different politicians go through with building towers as though that was some solution and the challenge that has to the domestic, your relationship to the ground, your relationship to your neighbors, very different. Or as here in, in Amsterdam, in Silo Dam, the rethinking of an old industrial building that becomes uh, a complex of multiple mixed use apartments. So those are the lecture series. And now I'll briefly look at some of the work that comes out of the right hand side of the diagram. So we've looked a little bit at the green topics on the left, the series of lectures. Now on the right, some idea that comes from the different design workshops. Um, there we're working in groups, we're working intensively, we're all the time challenging how do you draw how do you draw the problem which at the same time becomes the generator of drawing proposals that might address the problem? How do you think through drawing so that it's very much hands-on, sometimes very large, depending on what you want to draw and why you want to draw it, and sometimes inside a computer, very small sometimes making models, sometimes quite often having to explain your idea through the drawing with the minimum amount of words and the maximum amount of value to the drawing. Sometimes working cross-nationally, so here in Taipei, 50% Taiwanese students, 50% AA students, all mixed up together so you have to work through drawing because you can't use language in the same way that you can if you're all fluent in one language and the drawing becomes even more important in terms of being able to address um, what you're doing. In the first workshops, we always concentrate on inner London, the area around here within sort of 30 minutes walk from here. Incredibly rich, diverse fabric from major arteries of main roads through to the passageways and linkages and patterns that go back to the old field system of this land before it was built, which is still imprinted. And different ways in which you might draw what you see and then start to build arguments uh, from that. There is no correct drawing. There is no perfect way in which you might describe something through drawing. So the encouragement all the time to experiment, to try every possible different way of asking the questions, of working through the drawing to investigate <coughs> the urban. Some of these techniques you'll be familiar with, some of them you may not. We don't have any sort of standard model. We're not trying to, uh, to force you to, to into one particular language of drawing, but we are wanting to expose you and to force you to develop your own language, your own way of drawing the problem, which then becomes the generator of drawing the proposition of how you might address the problem. So these are all work done very quickly in the first few weeks of the year as groups start to work on the problem of the urban. Then in the middle part of the year, we focus on a major design project. 
Uh, we've been working recently on the inner periphery on the eastern edge as you move out towards the Olympic Park, which is a major new regeneration area in London. It's claimed by the government to be the regenerator of the East End, the poorest part of London historically. Uh, we're very critical of that argument and start to look at different ways in which the overall strategy of the Greater London Authority, the London Plan, can be reinterpreted in relation to a corridor and a cluster of important uh, uh, interventions in the area based on the concept of the knowledge economy and the supporting of what is a very vibrant but largely invisible knowledge economy in London. The impact of the Olympics itself, of course, we're now dealing with the aftermath of that. The building of this large park, one of the largest new, well, the largest new park in London. The implications of derelict land or old industrial land and how you rethink that. The old social housing and to what extent you value that and to what extent you're going to modify it. The transportation networks of the 19th century, the extraordinary canal system where you can take a boat from the Port of London up to Manchester or Liverpool or Birmingham. Fantastic infrastructure which is now largely abandoned. And starting to make propositions about the scale and pattern of intervention <coughs> into these areas. So there are areas that are going through great change and we're interested in drawing that change, developing concepts that can then be tested through specific research proposals where there is a clear argument which is then tested and expressed through drawing. So this is just some of the examples. We work obviously on models as well uh, as on drawings uh, and we also work obviously with many different computer programs which can equally be very powerful in terms of being able to manipulate and develop information. So that just gives you a flavor of the sorts of output that we get from the main design project in London. And finally, the intensive international workshop we do every year. This year we'll be competing the third year in Recife, northeast of Brazil. We normally commit to a three-year cycle with the city. Unlike most architecture schools which say, oh, let's go somewhere and do something, and they go there, take lots of photographs, make a lot of nuisance of themselves and disappear again. We make a commitment to the city government, in this case also to the federal government, who have a massive program of public housing investment, <coughs> that we're digging in for the long term. We are committed to a three-year cycle of research and feedback, which in this case has now started to make the first real projects on the ground, not done by us, but following the ideas and the concepts that we developed in the first place. So Recife has the luxury downtown tower area that you find in all rapidly developing cities, but it also has the informal, the very poor, the unserviced, the broken parts of the city. We uh, worked intensively for over two weeks there. We were given studio space and work, again, mixing 50% of students from the federal, federal university there with 50% of our students, so every group, every team is mixed and with teachers also from there and with local residents and other people involved. Again, very hands-on. It's a challenge. You've got 10 days to produce uh, a diagnosis, a critical proposal and a drawn strategy that is clear enough and detailed enough that you can express it and, and discuss it with non-experts <laughs> designers such as mayors and representatives of local citizens' organizations. So sometimes models are very useful. 
Sometimes very simple diagrams are better than more complicated drawings. Sometimes the combination of photograph and drawing. Any way you can that will communicate the richness of your idea. So that gives you just a, a flavor of the sorts of work that we do. In this case, that work in, then gets taken back into a debate. And if it works well, for example, here was the first time in uh, Recife, in this big city, that the representatives of the favelas, that's the illegal squatter settlements, their political representatives were in the same room with the mayor and with the minister from the federal government for cities. The first time they've been in the room together. One of our values, in a way, is not just the design work we do, but that political process. They start to talk to each other. They start to say, well, maybe we can begin to work something out. The student work is sort of interesting, and that's almost an excuse to be able to talk about, well, how could we start to think differently? So we see that as one of the values and one of the lessons that we can learn as urbanists that it's not just about the design, but it's about the process. Okay, I will end there, just about on time. Um, for those of you in the program, at the end of these sessions, I'm leaving on the table here a handout, which is the program for the next three weeks. Uh, if you can pick one up. Um, if it doesn't matter if you don't, I'll give you one tomorrow. Uh, meet me at 2 o'clock tomorrow in the AA bar, and then we'll go over to the studio, get you settled into the studio, and then we'll do a discussion both about the program and about some of the things I've said today, uh, and also probably do a bit of a walkabout through this part of London as well, just to get your feet on the ground. Um, course handbooks we'll have in the studio, but you can also download them from the server. Thank you very much.